if you want a short summary of everything I think about this situation, it's that we're absolutely f Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Greetings, fellow mortals. Just a reminder, saying it's just my opinion is for cowards. To understand the downfall of storytelling and streaming, we have to start at the beginning with... As a crusty old millennial at the end of his 20s, I lived through the rise of streaming services. I'm not gonna say I remember when there was only three channels on television, but I do remember when there was about 40. At least in my area, you were very limited in what you could watch and when. If you missed something, you had to hope that you could catch a replay of it. It's weird to think about in the year of our Lord 2024, but you could just miss out on things back then. But all that changed when we got Dish in our household. Seemingly limitless channels and the ability to record something that you wanted to watch but we're going to miss, ooh, it felt like magic back then. If you wanted a movie on demand, you either had to pay out of the ass for it, or you had to go down to your local blockbuster and hope that they still had it. Even when things started to evolve with Redbox and Netflix, there were still limitations to it. You either needed to motivate your lazy ass to get off the couch to go rent a movie, or wait for it to be delivered to you. Even a decade ago, we either needed to put a little bit of work in or to be patient, something that has completely disappeared from our modern society. And that started to change back when Netflix went from mailing you your movies to streaming them directly into your house. Not only that, you could watch entire seasons of a television show, sometimes even the entirety of the television show itself. It's not a big deal now, but binging really wasn't a thing unless you went out of your way to buy overly expensive DVDs of an entire television show. After that, Netflix started to make its own shows and then it received competition in the forms of other streaming services. And everything was great until people realized the problem. They didn't have the time or the money to watch all of this. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. And that's how we get to... With so much competition and so many options, you might think that things would constantly get better, but you would be dead wrong. Because everyone saw the money that a subscription fee could bring in, and so they all started to adopt it, including God... <laughs> Printers. No reasonable sane person would pay for all of this, so they had to pick and choose what they wanted. Oh, do I want to watch the next season of Stranger Things, or do I want my refrigerator to work because the subscription fee has gone up for it again? And considering that some things are necessary for us to continue functioning in our society, there's not a whole lot of choice in the matter. Especially when sailing the high seas is very easy and free. And then the streaming services lose money because people can't pay for everything. And so they had to rack their brains for brilliant ideas to get people to continue paying. You, as a reasonable person, would look at the history of all this and think, hey, they should try to be innovative. They should try different things and to be unique. And you're right, that would have been the reasonable and intelligent thing to do. But we live in a corporate dystopia and all of the people in charge are morons. Instead, they decided to use the exact same television and movie models without any alteration whatsoever, even though they could experiment very easily. They also decided to cancel every other project without rhyme or reason. They used inflation budgets to pay known actors to be in terrible movies that no one's going to watch. They invest in live action remakes of animated stuff from decades ago without being faithful to the original material. And then they realize, hey, we should probably invest in live entertainment years upon years upon years after YouTube and Twitch were already doing that. Yeah, I wonder why you're losing money. It's not about money. It's about sending a message. Everything burns. And that leads into... Limit the budget and invest into new actors. You're not going to get all of the attention in the world for every single project, but you're going to lose less money on it overall. One or two things are going to be a hit eventually, so just keep going. Next, stop relying on the old television formula. You're streaming. You're not limited to half an hour to an hour. Give each episode the exact amount of time it needs. Don't force it to fit within the 50 to 60 minute time frame. You don't have to drop a season all at once or do an episode every single week. You could take a break week in between each episode. 
and then space out what you release over the year a little bit better where basically a new episode or movie can come out every single day. That way people aren't overwhelmed and they have an actual chance to watch things and be excited about them. And not every season needs to be 8 to 10 episodes. Sometimes they could be shorter like 3 to 5. That way a new season can come out every single year and we don't have to wait for years on end between the different parts. Do different things like with Bandersnatch. Remember the choose your own adventure story? That one was fun at least. You could do something different like a first person perspective. Use the clue example and have a mystery film with three different solutions so you have to watch it three times in order to see each version of events. Have a film divided into different parts with each different section following a specific character's perspective. You get to choose which order you get to follow the characters in based off of what you want and then you get the full scope of everything that happened. Have some sort of interactive show where someone has to use an app or a website in order to solve puzzles to continue the story. Have constantly streaming channels of a specific genre that plays random episodes. That way people with choice paralysis can just click on something and go. But love of storytelling, I thought you wanted them to move away from the old style of television. Not completely, you can still do that. People will watch. That's right, keep moving! You know what? You know what? Yeah. Except you, you stay. Recruit people with an already established audience. Markiplier recently made a movie. Why aren't the streaming services doing a bidding war to get his movie exclusively on their service? He has tens of millions of subscriptions. What are you doing? Why aren't you trying to get him on board for all of the things? Or someone like Brandon Sanderson. He did crowdfunding for four of his books and he made over $40 million. Of course, you'd have to be respectful of these creative types, but you have a baked in audience. It doesn't even have to be pure television and movies. Guess what? You're a streaming service. You can do what you want. You could put on podcasts. You could do audiobooks where the only thing on screen are illustrations and the words being spoken from the book. You can invest more in animation. Look how great Arcane and Blue Eye Samurai did on Netflix. Break the weird western thought process of animation being exclusively for kids by making mature adult television shows. I don't know what the obsession is with live action. Live action is good, but also animation could be good too, especially with long running shows because then the characters don't age. You don't have to use makeup. The voice actors can remain the exact same unless there is a controversy and then guess what? You could replace them. And if making shows is too expensive, have each episode exclusively sponsored by a different product. Just start it off at the episode, get it out of the way. This episode of Blue Eye Samurai is brought to you by Doritos and then just get going with the story. People won't be thrilled, but hey, it's better than not having the television show, if the artistic people making the entertainment get paid more, I don't think reasonable people will complain all that much. Or for projects that you feel iffy about, you could do crowdfunding, and this is my weakest idea, I will admit it, where basically anyone that puts in money to the show gets to have their names in the credits as an executive producer. Indie video games already do this, and people would love to have their names attached to projects like Stranger Things or Game of Thrones before the shows even become popular. Oh, Mike. I was on TV! Ha, did you see me? I'm a natural! But why don't streaming services do anything different? Well, that's very simple. It's because... The reason streaming services and subscription fees even became a thing is because there was innovation. People saw an opening, a way for things to be better, and they worked to make that happen. They took a chance, and a lot of people have taken chances, and they've completely fallen on their faces. For every success you've ever heard of, I can guarantee there are 100 failures that you haven't. But every single increase in technology or new innovation in art comes from people taking a risk. From our cell phones to movies themselves. Can you imagine 
a little over 100 years ago and the pitch that people had to make to get movies started. We're going to take this new unproven technology to record a play and then have people watch it on a blank wall over and over and over again. It probably sounded absolutely insane. It's a miracle that it worked out at all. Every bit of modern storytelling that you enjoy only exists because people took a risk in the past. But here's the thing, giant corpos hate risk. I can promise you that every single idea that I just came up with was already pitched at these companies, but they were turned down and the people involved were probably fired. The corpos in charge only care about the bottom line and making shareholders happy. And guess what? Shareholders aren't happy with risk because you don't know if it will affect the bottom line or not. It's why the exact same mistakes are being made over and over and over again. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? In giant corporations, there's not a lot of room for innovation and chances. We've reached stagnation point where it's not going to evolve or get better anytime soon. That's why they're all losing money and why they will all eventually join together to make cable again. And then the corpos will invest in government and there'll be a giant crackdown on piracy. And then guess what? You have to pay an extreme fee in order to get your entertainment. At least until a group of insane people try something new, probably doing a bunch of crowdfunding for indie projects. And then there'll be more direct involvement with the fans to the art. Of course, there's always a chance that a miracle can happen and the streaming services could try something new. I mean, all of the ideas that I just said are free. I don't care if anyone uses them or anything, but I wouldn't count on a miracle. In terms of entertainment and culture, we're kind of at a standstill, so there needs to be a change. We'll just have to wait to see whether or not that change is going to be any good for us. But what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think that we're at the end of the streaming service era or that we'll continue like this for a while. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And remember, if you disagree with everything I have to say, that's perfectly fine. After all, everyone is entitled to their objectively wrong opinion. Well, that's the end of me. Thank you all so much for watching. You're still here? Good night, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Boom. Do not despair.